Answer me! Ben! I'm here, Jonathan. Uh, where's the entrance to the secret passage? Jonathan, there is no point. We're already too late, and I strongly advise you not to enter the director's office. Where's the door, Ben? I'm going to tell you a story. And after, if you still want to know where that door is, I'll guide you there. Many years ago, a five-year-old boy was in a car accident with his parents. While the parents died, the boy miraculously survived. Do you know what disassociative identity disorder is? Uh, no, uh, but these stories can wait until later. In short, the boy dealt with this emotional shock by projecting what happened to him onto someone else. He created a fictional friend whose family had died in a car accident. This is when the dissociative identity disorder, or as it is more commonly known, multiple personality disorder started to develop. This imaginary friend eventually became an independent personality. As one personality became more dominant, it would take over the boy's body, only to give way to the other. As they grew up, other personalities began to invade their world. With the help of his imaginary friend, the boy created a prison. Where the rest personalities were locked away. The boy and his childhood friend managed the place, keeping the other personalities in check. Eventually, the boy grew up and forgot about the personas locked away in his mind. Alas, his subconscious continued to create and develop new personalities. Years later, the boy fell in love and got married. Over the course of the marriage, family quarrels and problems caused his restrained personalities to slowly bubble up. One of the personalities developed by his subconscious was a female who fell in love with the boy and wanted him to live with her in the imaginary prison. She developed a plan to take control over the boy's body, kill his wife, hand him over to the authorities and avoid the death penalty by pleading insanity. Finally, she would pick a persona to take over and suffer the realities of an insane asylum. While she happily lived out her remaining years with her beloved one. Do you get the picture now? Ben, what are you getting at? Are, are, you, trying, are you trying to say that I'm that boy? Yes. No, I, I don't believe that. I, I won't believe that. The list of prisoners from the guards room. Is it with you? Look at it. Don't you see anything identical? The names of all your personalities are made up from letters in your name. Your name's on this list too. Yes, my friend. I am your first creation, your imaginary playmate. We built this place together. And even though you forgot everything, I never forgot you. Natalie, or mom as she is called here, is the girl that wants to kill your wife. Ben, I, I, I think I'm starting to remember. I need to save Sarah. Where's the door, Ben? Jonathan, I strongly advise you not to go there. You can't save Sarah anymore. Where's the freaking door, Ben? Second floor, right in front of the stairs. There's a bookcase there. You will figure out how to open it when you get there.
The defendant has been found guilty of the murder of Sarah Bradley, but not criminally responsible by reason of mental disorder, and will be placed in a high-security psychiatric hospital. No! Sarah! What have I done? I, I didn't kill her! What have I done? Forgive me, Sarah! <laughs> 